Hey guys, it's Charlotte, and sorry that my YouTube videos have all been sad and mainly just life updates, but so much has happened in my life. I sadly have been through a lot of traumatic times, and today I'm just recording this video to be able to get my side of the story and the truth out there because it's came to my attention that lies have been spun about... Um, the way things ended in my last relationship and it's also came to my attention that my ex is likely a compulsive liar so it's very important for me to speak the truth speak my story so that hopefully no one gets taken advantage by him so to um, start out I just want to talk a bit about how my relationship started with my ex I was going through a a very traumatic point in my life which legally I cannot speak about yet and he messaged me on Instagram and we were friends from high school and he said hey like if you ever need someone to talk to you could come over we could game so I took him up at, a, at his offer and um, let me come over to the place he was staying like quickly we connected and I found out that I was attracted to him and he reciprocated those feelings and we started into a relationship. Um, I was in a very, very frail state of mind at the beginning of this relationship. He knew that. Um, everyone in his household uh, knew that. It, it was clear to see. The biggest part was holding all these secrets in our relationship. He called my mom crazy. He called my sister lazy, even though he never once did his laundry or the dishes. Um, the entirety of our two-year relationship, he also never made himself food unless it was just boiling kettle and pouring it on instant noodles or heating stuff up in the air fryer that I bought him. And for myself, I was in an extremely vulnerable state of mind. And he said that he wanted to be there for me, but looking back at it now, he never was there for me. His words did not match his actions because he never did any chores, and if I were to ever try to open up to him or talk to him about the things that I was going through, he'd go like this. I, I don't want to talk about that. I, I just, it's too stressful. And not in an empathetic way, but like that. In like in an aggressive, disgusted way. And it was hard because the one person that I thought I could open up to about these things was disgusted in me talking about them and and didn't let me spend time with my family or my friends even though he was living rent free in my house for over a year with my family all he wanted to do is just sit in the room and use substances and some things that happened early on in our relationship that made me very uncomfortable was the fact that the girl in the house that he was first staying at he said that he saved her and from living on the streets from being homeless but he said that the reason he saved her was because he was hoping that she'd have sex with him and get into a relationship with him and sexually favor him in in thanks for saving her and i pushed that to the side because the last guy that i was with was worse sadly so my standards were very very low and he knew that and he took advantage of that and opened up to me about these things that these secrets that I then had to carry and um I quickly fell into debt because of legal things that I legally cannot discuss yet um now making myself, I'm currently $27,000 in debt. Um, and he told me when we first started dating that. So he got me into making fans like content. I set my boundaries and said that I do not want to do any nude content. Because for a long time, like, I was exploited as a child on the internet. So making content was very common for me but to my groomers and abusers is who I would um, have to send that content to when I was a minor 
as well as when I turned 18 and after that. And my ex told me that he waited until I had no money to tell me to do Fansly so that I'd feel more inclined to do it. He also told me early on in the relationship that he used to lie a lot and how he feels guilty about that. And that worried me. That went off in my head like, oh no. But I, I, I didn't say anything because I'm a people pleaser and I didn't want to make him think I'm looking down on him or thinking bad of him. Because I always think, uh, especially back then when I was in a very vulnerable state of mind, I am... Um, I try to see the best in people because I myself am a very empathetic and kind person and honest person. So I, d I never expected others to be deceitful liars because um, that's not who I am. So a few months into our relationship, I brought that back up with him and I said, Okay, um, Zach, I'm feeling really, really anxious about something you said a few months ago, which was that... You used to lie a lot and that you feel guilty about it and it's really been weighing on my mind and I've been feeling nervous and anxious about that um, just because of my trauma in the past and the fact I was lied to and groomed and um, deceited by a man before and how it was really making me worried and he he tried to just settle it very quickly like he's already thought of it like he was waiting for me to ask at some point and he said oh no 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 I just used to um, exaggerate my health issues and say they were a lot worse than they were but that calmed me because I trusted him I loved him I wanted to believe him I didn't want to believe I was getting into another toxic relationship with another person that's a liar and possibly a narcissist I just I didn't want to believe that you know ignorance is bliss and I was already in such a low state and so suicidal and financially being burdened by things out of my own control so I tried to push these things to the side but it never went away if I Sadly, but also thankfully have a very good memory and I genuinely think he thought I wouldn't remember these things, but I do and They scare me now knowing what kind of person he is because He he postures himself to be a very kind very hard done boy sad boy oh woe is me I'm so woe oh people I'm I'm so nervous I'm sad all the time but in reality he was very mean behind people's backs and nothing like what he was in front of people behind the scenes he would get mad at me about little things like when we were in public or when I was streaming if I said something or did something he didn't like he'd look at me and then um, berate me about it later in the car or after the stream or make passive-aggressive comments and I tried to just push it to the side because I didn't want to think that the person that I loved was actually didn't love me even though he was the first one to say I love you but I realize now that that was love bombing because that was very early into the relationship and you say you want to marry me etc but and he kept saying that up until I found out something which was the last straw and made me realize I had to break up with him so I we have our emails linked on my mail app on my laptop because of this game emulator that he set up on his and I's phone and um, so the mail app comes when I open my, uh, so the mail app pops up and it gives notifications when I open my computer and one day when he's at work, this was end of September 2023, I got a notification on, on my laptop from the mail app that was, that was only fans, OF, and it was of, it was on Zach's email and he had subscribed to one of my friends who is a content creator 
And I want to make it clear here that I have no animosity towards her because he is the one who made that conscious decision to go on a private browser, to make a OnlyFans account, to put his money that he said that he wanted us to save. Because he'd always say, it's our money. But I realized that it was only our money when he was benefiting from my money. But when, I, but when he made money, he then spent it hundreds of dollars on porn. One of them being of one of my friends. And as a sexual abuse survivor, <laughs> it really, I got really, really sad and really scared when I saw that notification. I clicked on it. I brought up, I typed OnlyFans into the search bar and saw that there was multiple subscriptions and multiple purchases from OnlyFans from his email. So I texted him and all I said was, Hi, uh, why did you subscribe to my friend, insert name here's OnlyFans? And right away he said, what do you mean? No, I didn't. Actually, I can read off the texts. Um, I can, I can read off the texts. I haven't looked at it back at it yet. Um, he said, I don't think I did. I haven't used OnlyFans in months. One second, honey, let me check. And I said, it says you're subscribed, and if you want to increase, increase the renewal price because she's upping it. And then I said, I wish you would talk to me about it at least. I don't want to have to find stuff out on my own accord. And then he said, I think I was hacked, honey. OMG, no, honey. Listen, I promise I didn't. Uh, I used to share it with one of his friends, and maybe he bought it. I don't know, honey, but I'm deleting my account on OnlyFans. Well, it went on, and as I said, I can provide the text messages if anyone needs, but <laughs> then, so then he said, just wait, I'm going to get the text from my friend proving it, and he screenshotted a Snapchat message to his friend, and all that it was saying was, please, please respond, please respond, buddy, I need you to respond right now. Nowhere did he explain what he needed from his friend or what he was asking. He just said, please respond, please respond. And then underneath all the please responds, it said he deleted a message. So there was a message that Zach sent that, that he deleted. And then after that, his friend said, just, yes, I bought, insert name here's OnlyFans. When they, he hadn't talked about it at all previous, it was nowhere in the screenshot, and the only place where information could have been giving, given about the situation was deleted. And it said deleted. And cause of reasonable doubt is that he said, please, buddy, I need you to say, yes, I bought, insert here's only fans. Our friendship depends on it because he did say that he threatened his friend by saying if he doesn't say that, that their friendship is over. So he did threaten them. I know that for sure because Zach did confirm that. Um, so I didn't buy that because what well, guy is sharing their OnlyFans anyway with a friend? And it's his email. It's his own email. His friend isn't using his email. I told my sister. My sister was like, well, I, I hope he wouldn't do that. She's like, I don't think he'd be stupid enough to use his own email and not cover his tracks. But turns out he was. And he did. Because what I realized, so the plan I made for myself was, I checked, because I know that the Apple phone has this screen time setting, so I looked on that to see if it would show, even with private browsing, what websites you've been on, and I looked, it does, and then I realized, so I realized, I needed to check his screen time, the screen time function on his phone, and I needed to check his bank app because the bank app would show the transactions onto OnlyFans and it would coincide with the emails that of the subscriptions which the subscriptions that were confirmed via his email was my friends and another girl which I realized after the fact both of these girls one of them being my friend 
and the other one with someone that I follow as a content creator because I follow other content creators. And, oh, it's just really heartbreaking. Because he persuaded me to make a fan. And, and then it still wasn't enough for him. And he decided to spend our money, his words, on them. Um, OnlyFans content of my friends and the pornography videos of other girls that I followed, which means he found those girls by going through my following. It's just so deceitful and just really degrading for me, especially as a sexual abuse survivor. And someone who is groomed online, and my friend who makes content is a sexual abuse survivor herself. <laughs> so it was just really, it just was really mean what he did. So anyways, I knew that I couldn't tell him I was going to check the screen time or his bank statements because I don't know if there's a way for him to delete that. I don't know. So I just kept that in the back of my mind and waited until he got home so that we could have the conversation in person and I could check those things on his phone without him lying and deleting them. So he comes home and this is something he'd do if I wouldn't make him food because I couldn't feel up to it for the day. He would um, starve himself the whole day and not eat and then complain about how tired he was to me to try to make me feel bad for not feeding him. And he used that same kind of technique this day when I found out about the OnlyFans things. He said, oh, I think someone reported me and got mad at me because I'm just so tired and I'm so stressed out today. And like insinuating that it's my fault and that I'm making him do bad in his job because I saw that. And he even said in the text, this is twice now you've accused me of doing something like this, but it's not twice I've accused. It's twice I've found out because previously I saw in the email as well a notification had popped up saying that he had an account on Ashley Madison, which is what men use to cheat on their wives and girlfriends with and on seeking arrangement. And he made an excuse for those things too, but now I don't even know what the truth is because he's proven himself to be a compulsive liar. So when he got home, he said he just wanted to play games, he doesn't want to talk, and I said, Zach, but, but we have to talk about this because I saw this, and I said, okay, I need to see, first I brought it up piece by piece, because I didn't want him to try to shut it down altogether, so I said, I need to see your screen time on your phone. He's like, no, uh, don't, I don't want you to, no. I said, why don't you want me to? I just feel uncomfortable. And I said, is that because your bank, your screen time will show that what I'm, that what the emails are about is true? Ah, I don't know. And he hands me his phone. Doesn't really say anything. And I look and it did prove it. It had only fans on his screen time, as well as Motherless and Thought Hub, both websites, were to steal um, content creators' content from. And then my next thing I had to do, so that I could see if he, it was him that subscribed to my friends' only fans, was his bank cap. And I looked, and it did, and it coincided with the emails about my friend's OnlyFans proving by his bank statements that it in fact was him who purchased my friend's OnlyFans for multiple months, as well as spent $239 on a singular video, which none of my content costs that much, so that was really offensive as well. And at this point, I'm $27,000 in debt. He never helps out with anything. He asks me for money for everything. The morning of, he's, he was complaining because I didn't get a chance to wash his work clothes. Again, remember, he never washed his own clothes. Not once did he wash his own clothes. He made me have to wash them every time. And he said, oh, I don't have any money left for my 
I don't have any money left for new pants, oh, insinuating that I will have to buy it. And that was confusing as well, because he had got paid only four days ago, and he was sick, and we hadn't been out at all for those four days. So that even confused me. I was like, well, where did your $889 check go if you have not So... That was really confusing because he hadn't left, but I realized now it's because he was obsessed with buying pornography behind my back. And then I saw, yeah, I saw the bank statements and I said, okay. I was really proud of myself because I'm crying a lot here. But in the moment, I was very much so like in court mindset. Like I was very calm, collected, and was just checking the facts. After I finished seeing his bank statements, he's rocking back and forth and then started crying. And I wasn't crying because even though I'm the victim here and I was the one that just found it. They had been e-cheated on, and, um, so he started crying and making, I said, Zach, you're not the victim here. I said, imagine being in my shoes. Imagine if I had done this to you. Imagine if I was, like, messaging your friend behind your back. He actually said yes to bringing up his own OnlyFans account after that. I saw that he had messaged my friend because she had sent a message back. He had uh, deleted the chat convo so only her reply showed up. But it was proof that he communicated with her on there. And he was just an anonymous faceless user like user 12379 or something. So he didn't use his real name, which that's what he does. All of his accounts that he comments on social media are all burner accounts. Whereas like me, I show my face and my name everywhere. I'm showing my face now. I'm, I'm being honest with people because I have nothing to hide, you know? So anyways, so looking at the screen time and the bank statements proof that it was him who purchased my friend's OnlyFans and it was him who purchased the video as well. And at first he said, oh, it was from Peach Jars because that was like the first content creator he had showed me. So he like felt like it was in a safe realm to mention it. But then he said, no, it was actually Luna Bean. This is one that I was following. I've since unfollowed because it's just too traumatic to have that pop up and know that my ex was not the creator's fault because the creators they're, they're it's their job you know they're trying to make money it's there's usually not even much sensuality behind it it's a job i know as myself as a content creator is quite triggering for making a lot of content anyways so i found out that was proof but he doubled down on the lie he kept saying oh well it wasn't your friend's only, it wasn't me who bought the only, your own friend's OnlyFans. I said, yes, it is. Like, your email proves it. It coincides with the emails from OnlyFans talking about it. And he said to me, well, I've only been doing this since I got a job. I said, okay, so that means you would have been buying this content. Because it went back to June. That was as far as his bank statements went. And um, that's as far as I could see. And the OnlyFans was there. And um, he said, yeah, well, it's just, I only started when I got my job. So I said, okay, that means that you would have done it sooner if you had more money. No, that's not it. And I said, yes, Zach, that's what those words mean. And then he would just start crying to try to um, shift the blame and try to make himself look like the victim when really he was the perpetrator and he lied and hid everything that he was doing so when I found that out when I checked the facts when I saw it was him when I saw the amount of money um and I had the proof I told him that we have to break up and that this is a decision that I have to make so I I broke up with him and I, I drove him to his mom's and my sister came with me. I um, mean, it was really weird because he would mirror me in the car if I took a deep breath anxiously. He'd take a deep breath as well. And I realize now he used to do that when I'd have a panic attack. If he didn't want to have to deal with me anymore, he'd start having a panic attack. Because naturally, like, I'm an empathetic person. And if he's worried, it snapped me out of my panic because I'd want to be able to help him and help calm him down because I loved him. But I realize now 
since he's a compulsive liar, um, that I honestly think he was just mirroring me because then he'd say, oh, I need, I need anxiety meds right after that. But when it came time and it was his doctor's appointment and I'd say, make sure to ask for anxiety meds. You really need them. You know, your panic attacks and stuff. He'd say, no, nah, I don't need them. I don't need them. So like when the time came to actually like have the solution for the panic attacks he was having, he didn't want it, and I realize now it's because he's a compulsive liar, and he was just mirroring me, and the, that wasn't a real panic attack he had, but what he was doing was to mirror me, to try to make the attention on him, and to make me stop crying, so that I would, it's just, it's just so manipulative, I just, I don't know why someone would do that, like, I'm not like that, so I don't understand why someone would do that. But, yeah, that's that's about what happened. I was really proud of myself self for staying calm, cool, collected, factual, to the facts, you know. And I'm someone that has never checked his phone and have never checked someone's phone in a relationship before because I don't want to have dis that to me is deceitful. And I, tr I trust my partner when I'm in a relationship with someone. And, but I'm just so, so freaking glad that I saw that notification, that the notification just happened to pop up of OnlyFans because otherwise I wouldn't have known. I would have had to spend my money to buy him his work pants while he spends his next check on girls OnlyFans. And he said he would jack off to it at night. Well, yeah, I'm so so I just swapped to my phone because my camera died and I don't want to have to record this in um, another sitting. I just want to finish it now so it's over and done with and I don't have to ruminate on it. Um, so, yeah. Thankfully, I handled it very cool, calm and collected. Um, I checked the facts. I feel like I was really smart about it because I didn't let him know about the screen time and the bank thing that I was going to check it until I was there in person so he couldn't delete it. And recently, because he still owes me um, $850 for an iPhone that I bought him um, in full from the Apple store. And um, then he complained about it when he was at the beach with his friend and one of my friends and said that it was an older version than it was. He lied. I said, no, it is. and that it's really old and bad. I said, no, Zach, I bought you this phone about six months ago, new and in full price from the Apple store. Like, I don't know if he thought I wouldn't remember and if he was trying to make himself like, feel like he's hard done by in the relationship. But no, I purchased him that phone. He made me, he was really angry about it. And he broke his phone, he was on the toilet, probably looking at porn and dropped it, and it broke. That's what I realized too, cause he'd be on the toilet for so long sometimes. And I'd be like, what are you doing? Are you okay? And he'd say that he was just looking at memes, but I realize now that he was looking at pornography. And my friends, so anyways, okay, there's just so much to unpack. That's why I had to record a video because um, he did tell me, because he still owes me the money, so I have to be in contact with him sometimes. And he did say um, that he's, because uh, I asked him, I said, when I broke up with him, I said, please don't lie to people. I said, please don't spin the truth. But I found out that he still has been lying to people and telling them that it wasn't him who bought my friends only fans, even though his bank statements proved that as well as the emails. So it's just hard because he's still lying about that. And I know that he is since he said that he's been telling people something that isn't the truth. Um, that isn't the facts. You know, that's not what the receipts show. You know, he's lying is what's happening. So anyways, I knew that I had to share my side of this story. <laughs> and what was really sad too was I've since taken his email off of my laptop because it's just so triggering because then another day when I went to go stream, it popped up that he was sending some new girl money. And I said to him, I said, I'm still waiting for you to pay me back. I saw that he sent $55 to some new girl. 
And what's funny is like, that's not reoccurring things that he does in a relationship. He either makes like a big promise or a big like purchase to someone like give money to someone at first to try to pretend like he's a good guy. He's a white knight that he wants to help. But those things never are reoccurring in a relationship. He's just a taker. Cause it's the same with the girl that he saved from being homeless. She was having to work um, while he was sitting and playing games all day. And he was making her having to pay the rent in the old place. Just, he's so manipulative and is just such a taker. Took a lot from me emotionally, financially, um, when I'm already in debt because of other things that are out of my control. And he knew that. And, um, yeah, so that was really sad as well. And so I'm still waiting. Today is actually a day that he gets paid and he has not sent me the e-transfer yet. <laughs> And yeah, but, um, so I am single now. That's why I'm single. And I'm just going to stay single and celibate for a long time. Because what my counselor said was, and it's true, that, um, this is my first time since being an adult and I'm 27 that I've been single. So it's really nice that finally I can just focus on myself. Um... And yeah, it's so it's sad how my relationship ended and the fact that I was lied to, mistreated um again in a relationship and cheated on, but at least I had the strength to be able to end it. At least I saw that notification. At least I checked the screen time and proved the facts that it in fact was true. Because I said to him that day when I broke up with him, when I was looking through st this stuff, I said, Zach, I have to be able to see this to make a decision about if our relationship ends or not. Because if it was just like... I don't know, spam or something coming through, but it wasn't. What he had done was all premediated, and it was a con. And I said this to him it's a conscious decision you made. And he kept saying, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. And like, I don't know what to say to that. That just made me actually really afraid because that's the same word that I used to describe my other abuser. So that made me really afraid that he was using that word to describe himself. Yet then trying to make himself like the victim, it was just really confusing. It's really sad because he's tried to sway people in our personal life as well. And I just am sick of people lying about me because all I ever do is be honest, try my best to be kind to other people and spread kindness, happiness, and truth. And that's why I'm making this video today and why I have to speak my truth since things are still being lied about and he still hasn't fully been honest with anyone. Not me, <laughs> nobody. So, yep, that was the end of that relationship. And now I'm just gonna be celibate and focusing on me. And yeah, that's why I'm single. Um, Thank you guys for all your support. It's hard because I live rurally. And the few friends I did have, he bought their only fans and then lied to other friends in my town about the truth of what actually happened in the relationship. So I've realized that, yeah, yeah, I, I had to speak my truth here. But thank you guys for all of the kind words. Please make some prayers if you're religious. And, um... Yeah, thank you guys so much for always being kind. And I hope that um, one day I will find the love of my life. Because I know the love of my life wouldn't cheat on me, wouldn't lie to me. And yeah, wouldn't be deceitful and a compulsive liar. That's, that's not the love of my life, you know? So yeah, um, I don't know how to end this, but I guess I'll just say bye. And thank you, everybody. Okay.